Do you have feelings? I might have some feelings. Neo is a consumer-facing humanoid home robot built by One X Technologies. It's a five foot six, 66 pound machine designed to live in ordinary homes and perform everyday chores. Think fetching items, opening doors, cleaning, folding laundry, carrying loads, and talking with you. Neo is being sold as both a purchase option and a subscription. The early access ownership price is $20,000, or you can take a monthly plan at $499 a month with a minimum term. U.S. deliveries are expected to start in 2026. All right, let's talk about what's actually inside Neo, because this is where things get impressive and surprisingly practical. Neo stands at about five foot six inches tall, which makes it just a little shorter than the average adult. It's also incredibly light for a humanoid robot, weighing only 66 pounds. That's not a coincidence, it's a deliberate safety choice. The lighter frame means less risk if it bumps into you, and it also allows Neo to move more gracefully around the home. Now, don't let that light weight fool you. Neo is deceptively strong. It can theoretically lift up to 154 pounds. Though that's more of a lab limit than an everyday scenario, it's still a big amount. In normal use, it's rated to carry about 55 pounds while walking, which is roughly the weight of a large laundry basket or a small box of groceries. Each arm alone can handle an 18-pound payload, enough for most household items. Think kettles, cushions, or even a small pet carrier, if you're being creative. Where Neo really shines, though, is in its hands. They're designed with 22 degrees of freedom, which basically means each finger and joint can move in a very human-like way. That dexterity allows Neo to grasp delicate items without crushing them, twist doorknobs, or even fold clothes, things that simpler robots would struggle to do. Powering all this is an 842 watt hour battery, giving Neo roughly four hours of runtime on a full charge. The charging system is clever too. For every hour it spends plugged in, it gains about six minutes of runtime, so quick top-ups are easy between chores. Inside, Neo is equipped with dual fisheye stereo cameras that act like its eyes, a four microphone array to listen and localize sounds, and multiple built-in speakers for natural conversation. Do you have feelings? I might have some feelings. All of that computing power runs on a custom 1X Cortex system, which uses NVIDIA's Jetson Thor AI chip. For context, this setup offers an estimated 2,070 FP4 teraflops of processing power, meaning it's more than capable of running advanced vision and motion models right on board without constantly needing the cloud. That's a big deal for responsiveness and privacy. And yes, Neo has been designed to be safe around humans inside and out. Its body is covered in a soft 3D lattice polymer sweater shell, giving it a friendly texture and making accidental contact less dangerous. The internal mechanics make its movements smoother, quieter, and more natural than the jerky motions you see in older robots. The joints are pinch-proof, which is a thoughtful touch, literally, for homes with pets or kids. Neo's hands are rated IP68, so they're waterproof enough to handle spills or cleaning tasks, while the rest of the body is IP44, meaning it's resistant to splashes but not meant to be hosed down. Good to know in case someone was opting for a swim. But people have good things to say about the design, with one user saying, everything else aside, they achieved a more friendly looking design than Figure 03, while another user expressed their frustration with the humanoid designs in robots lately. Why are they all making them look humanoid? It's stupid, just add extra arms and modules and whatever else that can make it more efficient at what they can do. Suspicious frowny face. Neo runs on One X's onboard AI model. It's designed to work autonomously for many simple tasks, walking to a room, picking up items it recognizes, opening doors, and following scheduled chores. But, and this is huge, One X is up front that early Neo units will rely heavily on a human-in-the-loop system called expert mode or teleoperation. Now, what does that mean in practice? If Neo encounters a chore it hasn't reliably learned, a trained 1X operator can remotely pilot or supervise the robot to complete the job and simultaneously record that human-guided behavior as training data. That data is then used to teach Neo to perform the task autonomously in the future. 1X explicitly positions this as a learning strategy. Real homes give messy conditions that only real human teaching can quickly resolve. 
One X frames Neo's rollout as a social contract. In plain terms, to improve Neo quickly, early buyers must let selected company experts access the robot sensors under controlled conditions so Neo can learn from real world interactions. One X says operators won't be able to connect without explicit user permission, that faces can be blurred, that user defined no go zones can be set, bedrooms, bathrooms, and that remote access will be limited and scheduled. CEO Bernd Barnick said living with Neo is magical, but also has warned the journey won't be perfect and data sharing is central to progress. That phrase, social contract, pops up a lot because the company makes progress contingent on users opting into data sharing and teleoperation. It's essential to know that up front. Now, this is where the story around Neo gets interesting because the reaction online hasn't been one sided at all. In fact, it's been a real mix of excitement, curiosity, and cautious skepticism. On the positive side, a lot of tech journalists have called Neo a genuinely bold step forward. Not another lab experiment or futuristic prototype, but a real consumer-ready humanoid that you could, in theory, have walking around your home. Outlets have praised its sleek, lightweight body, its surprisingly nimble hands, and the fact that its design feels friendly and practical rather than intimidating. It doesn't look like something from a science fiction movie that escaped the lab. It looks like something that belongs in a living room. The charm factor is something One X seems to know well. The company often highlights how Neo can do more than chores. It can tell jokes, remember little preferences about how you like things done, and respond to natural conversation using its built-in AI. The idea is that it doesn't just help you, it lives with you, adapting, learning, and quietly blending into the background of everyday life. That's a vision people want to believe in. But of course, not everyone is convinced. In fact, the concerns are just as passionate and honestly pretty reasonable. The biggest red flag for many has been privacy. Reporters from outlets like Ynet Global and Humanoids Daily have pointed out that Neo's teleoperation system, the feature that allows remote human experts to help train or guide the robot, could mean that at least sometimes real human operators are seeing what the robot sees inside your home. Even with all the promised safeguards, the blurring of faces, the no-go zones for private spaces, and strict permissions before anyone connects, it still makes people uneasy. And honestly, who wouldn't hesitate at the thought of a stranger, even a verified expert, viewing a live feed from their living room? Then there's the question of autonomy, or how much Neo can really do on its own right now. Multiple journalists who attended early demos reported that while Neo looked incredibly lifelike and capable, many of its actions were still guided by human operators behind the scenes. One journalist even said bluntly, I didn't see Neo do anything autonomously after watching a staged demo where most of the nuanced tasks were teleoperated. That line from Humanoids Daily sparked debates online about whether it's fair to call Neo autonomous yet, or whether it's still in a transitional stage, part AI, part human guided. Now, this idea is not free from criticism and jokes, with people saying things like, revolutionary idea, let the guy controlling the bot come do the chores himself. We can call it housekeeping IRL with some people also pointing out the ridiculousness of the situation. So I'm paying a random guy from India to do a task 10 times slower and 100 times the cost, all while creeping on me. You see, there's also the conversation about price and practicality. With an upfront cost of $20,000 or a $499 monthly subscription, Neo isn't exactly an impulse buy. It's a serious investment, more than many used cars, and a lot of people are asking the same question. Is it actually worth it right now? Critics argue that for that kind of money, Neo would need to do a lot more than fold laundry or fetch a water bottle. Others point out that early buyers aren't just customers, they're effectively collaborators paying to help train Neo's AI through their everyday lives. Public response to this isn't favorable, to say the least. You need to be okay with that social contract. The contract. I pay you 20k so you can train your robot for free while I give away all my privacy to a corp and I trust that the operator on the other side won't harm me. Nice deal. Poop emoji. If you choose to buy Neo outright, 
One X offers a three-year warranty, according to its order page. If you go for the $499 monthly subscription, you get ongoing software updates, maintenance, and customer support built in. Either way, you're paying not just for the robot, but for the cloud-based intelligence and human expertise that keep it running and improving over time. So the real question is less about cost and more about value. How much time or effort do you expect to save with NEO? If it takes on daily chores that eat up an hour or two of your life and you value that time highly, maybe it starts to make sense. But for most households, the math won't immediately add up. To really drive the point home of public perception of the abilities of the robot so far, another highlighted comment with over 5,000 likes was saying, Wow, your house looks terrible. Thanks, I bought a $20,000 robot that does all my chores poorly. For many people, that's worth it. For others, it's better to wait until the technology matures, prices drop, and the privacy model evolves. Either way, One X has done something remarkable. It's turned the dream of a humanoid home robot into a real purchasable product, one that raises as many important questions as it answers. So who's the right kind of person to bring a Neo home? If you're watching this as a potential buyer, let's be blunt about it. Neo is not for everyone. It's a high-end, early-access product meant for people who see themselves as part of the technology's evolution, not just its end users. The ideal Neo owner is a tech enthusiast or early adopter, someone who's comfortable with a learning curve, patient with updates, and excited about contributing to the future of robotics. It's also a great fit for organizations experimenting with controlled environments like assisted living centers or pilot programs in accessibility where repetitive tasks can be standardized and monitored. But if you're someone who wants a plug-and-play robot that's completely autonomous right out of the box, or if you have zero tolerance for data sharing or teleoperation, then Neo probably isn't for you, at least not yet. It's also not a cheap appliance replacement. For now, it's more of a high-end experiment you can live with rather than a fully finished consumer tool. Now, if you're wondering what Neo actually does in the real world, not just in theory, the answer comes from journalists who've seen it up close. Several outlets have described live demos where Neo performed small but meaningful chores like watering plants and tidying rooms, but they also noted that many of these actions were still guided by human operators. Another demo showed Neo folding shirts, a surprisingly complex task for a robot, but again, only after an expert had first guided the process remotely. The pattern here is consistent. Neo can already do quite a lot, but most of it still involves some degree of human input. However, that's exactly the point of its learning model. The more people use Neo, the more examples it gathers and the more capable it becomes. Each new skill demonstrated by humans becomes another piece of the puzzle that brings Neo closer to true autonomy. In other words, its limitations today are also its lessons for tomorrow. The whole human-in-the-loop idea has split the robotics community right down the middle. On one side, you've got the pro-data camp made up of engineers, analysts, and journalists who argue that this is the most practical way forward. They say One X is being transparent about its methods. They're not pretending Neo is more autonomous than it is, and that letting trained humans supervise robots in real homes is the fastest way to build a robust data set for training. In their view, you can't get to capable, trustworthy human robots without a period of assisted learning. Then on the other side, you have the privacy-first skeptics who see the approach as a dangerous precedent. They warn that even with safeguards, allowing live camera feeds from private spaces to be streamed to operators could be abused or mismanaged. Outlets like Ynet Global have compared it to early self-driving demos where human drivers secretly intervened, saying that it might blur the line between honest progress and over-promising. They also question whether the average person, especially at a $20,000 price point, is really willing to sign up for that kind of arrangement. People said things like, liked the part where when she said, he can pick up something heavy and try to kill me, and CEO's answer was, Oh, he isn't allowed to pick up heavy objects. Not, he isn't allowed to kill you. Best answer. With another one saying, I think they have it backwards. They should pay us 20 k to test and train their AI toddler while strangers watch us remotely. Safe to say people don't seem to love the snooping aspect. The robot has the ability to terminate you, but he will not because of programming, said by every scientist in every sci-fi apocalypse doomsday movie. I roll emoji. But there are also other sides to the story, one where Neo could be a helpful addition to those in need. 
Users commented saying, with a family member who is legally blind, but technically savvy, I can see utility even in this state of development. And another confirming saying, I don't see taking a lot of time being a problem. The job got done, right? And it took no one else's time away. This is a paradigm shift. Can't wait to have my robot. I'm quadriplegic in a wheelchair. And if it took my robot five minutes to get my coffee, I would thank him with a big smile on my face. Neither camp is completely wrong, and that's what makes this debate so compelling. On one hand, Neo's method might genuinely be the fastest way to teach robots to function safely in human environments. On the other hand, it pushes the boundaries of how much privacy we're willing to exchange for convenience. It's not fear versus optimism, it's two valid perspectives on the same technological leap. And here's a fun twist hot off the press. Neo's first customers aren't just curious tech fans, they're Norwegian entrepreneurs and investors who've already pre-ordered the robot. Local outlet E24 reported that several well-known business figures jumped on early units, describing it as the future arriving in the living room. One buyer, Christina Wig, admitted that she knows Neo isn't yet fully autonomous, but said that's part of the excitement. She's basically subscribing to the future. The appeal? Offloading the boring, repetitive chores most of us hate, and being among the first to help teach an AI how to live with humans. Meanwhile, One X Technologies just confirmed that Neo's first beta batch will begin limited home trials in Scandinavia in early 2025 before expanding to US pilot users later in the year. These early Neos will operate under a supervised expert mode, meaning trained operators can still step in when the robot gets confused a reality the company says will fade as Neo's shared AI model learns. So yes, the hype is real, the future is on pre-order, and somewhere in Oslo, someone's robot is already learning how to fold laundry. Would you buy Neo? And are the privacy concerns something you would be willing to look past? Let me know in the comments section below.